We should try being single divorced men in their 40s for a day and see if we're both prepared for that to maybe happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for picking me up. No, <laughs> it's nothing. It means a lot, man. I, I, I would have had to just stay, stay there all day because I had no other form of transportation and my 87 Ford has to get fixed up. All right, no problem. I called off today, so. How you been, Daniel? You know what, Greg? It's been good. It's been great. Anyway, enough blabbing on about myself. Um, what's been going on in your life? Don't have much to say. I've just been gregging it up like I do every week. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since high school. I was on the country road. I flipped. Thankfully, someone drove past to me and called the police. I could have been stuck there all day. Ah, oh, no. But let's stop talking about it. Let's play some music and groove. Oh yeah, turn the radio on. This is one of my favorite songs. It reminds me of being in high school, actually. Come on. We can't just be living in the past, Greg. People mistake me for 19. I was at the Culver's drive-thru and someone said, what did you, what are you, your parents got you this car? And I said, I bought it myself. I'm, I'm 48, for God's sake. I'm all okay with a man listening to new hip music, but I don't want you to get in this trap of trying to keep getting younger. Like, didn't you get Botox from like a Groupon oh, do you see the, this week? Do you see the injection marks? I got it earlier today, actually. Yeah, I don't want you to get stuck in this world of being a 40, eight-year-old divorced man that's single trying so hard to get with a 24-year-old. Yeah, I am doing a little bit of biohacking with my health. Brian Johnson is an inspiration. Put on Jack Harlow or um, Polo G. I've also been getting into Trippy Red. Or 6 9 Sorry for suggesting so many, but... It's called What's Poppin'. What's poppin'? Oh, yeah. Brand new whip, just hopped in. Just hopped in. I got options. I can pass that bitch like stock. I can put the ball in the end zone, put a bad bitch in the friend zone. Do you hear that? He just said I could put a bad bitch in the friend zone. That's how I like to think about my ex-wife. She divorced me, but... In reality, I put her in the friend zone, so she got mad. You are still saying she's a bad bitch? Oh, she, she's a bad bitch. We were married for a decade and a half. Of course she's a bad bitch. I only date de bad bitches. I'm just surprised after everything she put you through for the last three years of your marriage. Are you saying know. that? That's what bad bitches do. They sleep with every man in town. And you still have loyalty to her, it seems like. She's a bad bitch. That's why, that's why every guy in town wanted her. My ex-wife Jennifer has nothing on me. No, no, nothing on me. She has the kids 100%. I wish I could have them 50, but the government said no. F the government, though. But I'm still making money, though. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just... Um, we can just go back to 80s music. I feel like it, it got kind of depressing. After driving for about 30 minutes, we made it to the 40-year-old single divorced man lunch spot. As a 48-year-old man, people in my demographic, we pretty much only eat roast dinners, casseroles, soups, and comfort foods. I did some research and I found this place called Kitchen Table. I didn't even look at the menu. Just from the name Kitchen Table, I knew that's what I wanted. You know when you get home from work and there's food on the kitchen table and that heartwarming feeling that you get that someone made you food and it's like, oh my gosh, someone cares about me. 
when I saw there was a restaurant called Kitchen Table, I got overwhelmed with that feeling and I knew I had to go with my friend Daniel. So you used to get that feeling naturally from loved ones, now you pay to get that feeling from a source that isn't exactly genuine. They aren't making it just for you. But no way. Sort of like getting a escort in a certain way, paying for some apparent love that you think you're gonna get. <laughs> I will admit it, this place doesn't remind me of when my wife Jennifer used to cook me dinner, but it's a close cut. Yeah, I even got some soup in a, in a mug, which I'm not gonna lie, did make me feel like I was at a down home with my wife making me something. We were at a bowl, so she filled up a coffee cup. So they, they really have it down, this place. Boom, boom. Po, gotta get, get. <laughs> you know that Black Eyed Peas song from like 13 years ago? I got a meatloaf sandwich and my buddy Daniel got some chicken marinade sandwich and I know we're both adults here. <laughs> And some could say this is just a whale for two men to do this, but I asked you, do you wanna do a little half and half situation? Mm. And you seemed a little bit whaled about it, like I was overstepping a boundary, but thankfully yeah. you accepted the invitation. At first thought I was a little bit, I'll just say creeped out by the gesture, but then I realized it's pretty harmless. And I know it's been about a minute since you mentioned this, but don't ever bring up Boom Boom Pow again because that was my wedding song. You know my wedding was 13 years ago. I, I truly am sorry for what You were there! Happened. You were a groomsman and you saw us do our first dance to Boom Boom Pow. That was when I just left the Mormon church. So I just started drinking for the first time in my life. I've mm. never had six shots of whatever you were yeah. feeding me. So I forgot everything that happened. I really, I really wish I could remember. Mm. But looking back, why should I remember? Because you guys are divorced now. So it doesn't mean anything, right? It still meant something to me. Just because a marriage gets divorced doesn't mean it's a failure. Would you say, oh, this person failed because they die of diabetes? Since I'm 45, single and divorced, you absolutely know I'm eating a meatloaf sandwich on the regular. But this meatloaf sandwich was above regular. <laughs> This meatloaf sandwich was so good, I pulled out my phone, took a photo of it, and I was ready to send it to my ex-wife, Jennifer, to, to, to shove it in her face. That I'm eating good and she's probably eating, uh, having a six inch sub or something. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not eating that for lunch, I'm having a meatloaf sandwich. Mm -hmm. I'm living a better life in the hall. You still are in that part of the divorce where every single day you try to prove to them that you're living a better life, I ended that two years ago, when I was four years into the divorce. I don't do that anymore, I don't compete. But I do make fake accounts and send her hateful messages about her appearance every Valentine's Day. The bird sandwich was full of chicken, which we need for protein since we're both uh, getting back into the gym. Yeah. It's a stereotype that since we're in our 40s and we're single and divorced, oh, you're trying to hit the gym so you can get with more chicks. No, I value the benefits of what I get from it for myself. I get mental clarity. I just feel better about myself. And I know that sounds kind of new age, caring about mental health and stuff. These youngins, I did just say, when they talk about mental health and stuff, they do kind of have a point. Mm, I'm still coming around to that, I'll be honest. Anyways, how did a chicken sandwich turn into this? But oh. the, 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 the chicken sandwich, it wasn't as good as the meatloaf sandwich, but I'm gonna give this kitchen table place almost as good as my wife's kitchen when I used to be married. I was about to say the same thing. Thing about it though, when men like us have a howdy meal like that, you start thinking about the past. <coughs> Getting four decades old, you start having that back pain. Yeah, I'm going to a Johnny Carson tribute band concert next weekend. There's probably still con tickets left if you wanted to go. I can't go to all these tribute shows anymore. They just remind me of my youth and when I think of my youth, I think about all these things I wanted to do, but I didn't do. And now it feels like it's too late. It is this wind that's happening. Mother Nature telling me that it is too late. For what? To do all the things that I wanted to do, like back in junior high when me and my buddies wanted to start a band. 
I was gonna play the drums. Brandon was gonna be the lead singer. This girl Rachel was gonna be the guitarist. I just feel sucky being 45 and thinking that I can't start a band anymore because it's too late. Greg, you, you sat in bird shape. Okay, please don't call me crazy. I know this is going on the internet, and people on the internet are so quick to call a man in their 40s that is single and divorced crazy. But I remember my wife's stepsister told me that on Sunday mornings when she said she was going to Bible study, she was actually going to this witch place. And this is when we won fights. We, we got in arguments every week. So I'm pretty sure she put like some witch thing on me, and that's why bullshit ended up on me. And I don't know what to do about it because, because the laws have nothing about people putting witches on you or whatever, but I think she did something, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to put something bad on her, some bad luck. Well, you had just sent her a message throwing shade, as my niece says. So maybe it's instant karma. Maybe you should start leading with love. Slug bug. I saw, I saw a beetle. Beetle car? Ah, uh, that's what people do. Yeah, I saw it on Instagram Reels. Saw some college kids doing it, so. Then we could start doing, never mind. Okay, when you get older, you become single, you become divorced, you start to truly appreciate the art that is a museum. Yeah, museums are wasted on the youth. All they do is just take a photo, but we like reading everything, fully mm. trying to educate ourselves. Yeah, you can lose yourself in a museum. And we also love traveling. It just becomes so nice with age. So we drove an extra 15 minutes to the state of Iowa, Council Bluffs, Iowa, to the railroad museum. Trains, they're all around us, but no one thinks about they need a museum. When you actually go to museums, Museum, you learn that there's a lot more than we ever thought. Something that I learned while in the museum was that it took like a long time to build all these railroads. It wasn't just like snap of a finger, there's railroads. It took like, like decades. People died. I'll just say it. I have kind of a short attention span, but this museum kept me in check because they just had a bunch of little like things to touch. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they had a talking photograph. That man kept being, and he kept talking, but it was just a photo. And it made me think, I used to see those Harry Potter movies back in the day when I first met my wife, and there's, a, there's photos that talk. Now we're there. It ain't so weird anymore. It's not a weird Hollywood thing. It's real, it's talking photos. Am I even real? Was my marriage even real? Are my kids even real? What was I made for? Are you really Eilish? You're listening to way too much <laughs> new music. I'm just saying that song might, it might touch you. What were we made for? She doesn't know, and we don't know either. I thought these people were real people, and I got spooked, I, I, mm. I'll admit it. You had a little bit of a, a scare, and you say you're high testosterone. I immediately went into fight mode. Are you going into little protect me mode? I also have estrogen flowing through my veins. That's a, that's not a bad thing. Okay, are you about? To, are you trying to say something? You're coming out? <laughs> no. All right. Since I'm part of the older, culturally inclined crowd, I thought it was an excellent museum. It was great. Our tax dollars are going towards something. It was free. In God we trust. This is a big stereotype. People that are older are the only people that go to movies during the day. And yes, I guess we fit that stereotype. I'd be down to see Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, I know it's not technically for the mid to late 40s divorce demographic, but... No, I'm not gonna go to a movie not mutt for people like us and get made fun of. No, you're, you're acting like my wife right now, my, my ex-wife. <sighs> you're right, sorry. That's, I'm so embarrassed I even thought about that. Are we down to get ice cream? Yeah, we can only watch movies in our demographic. We can't, we can't step out of that. Let's just, I want some chocolate fudge anyway. 
And we aren't just gonna go to any ice cream place. We're gonna go to the number one Yelp reviewed ice cream place. I don't know if I said that right, but yeah, Yelp reviewed this ice cream as the number one place in the US, I guess. In the US of A. Here's the thing, I'm not pretentious. I'm not just gonna go somewhere because it's a frazzle dazzly or whatever. No, Yelp said that this place is a farm to cone. Why would there be anyone in the middle? And then you realize there always is people in the middle. This is what I wanna do. These are the two people that are supposed to be in it. This is the middle. Boom! Punch the oh. people in the middle. Get them out of the game. I've beat their ass. But also, I have a thought before, maybe I could start a farm and just do it myself, but I'm glad these people are doing it, so I don't have to do that. My little order was the cheesecake crunch bite with the banana bread buttercup. I've been getting a little bit into my foodie era because of all those Netflix shows about food. So truffle, it's sort of a plant and it enhances food. And you kind of have to experience it. So it just seems like you're saying your ice cream was good, but you can't explain it. Yeah. I got the cookies and cream and the chocolate hazelnut. And before I even describe how these taste, one of the reasons I love ice cream is because it's a comfort food. Something about it just reminds me of being a child and it can be very comforting for older men like us. Oh, for sure, those nostalgic foods. They really have a pull on our demo. Anyway, my ice cream was just delicious. And I do have to say, Yelp isn't lying. I haven't been to that many ice cream places, but I would say it dissolves number one. Also, we've ate here before on another bro day, mm -hmm. Daniel and I. <laughs> Home flour creamery. It's about time to go shopping. It used to be a great thing where clothes would just appear in our closet because the wifey would buy them for us. Now, if we don't buy clothes, we don't have clothes. I'm not knowledgeable at all about fashion. Now I'm knowledgeable about many other things. I can educate you about everything. But one of the things I can't is fashion. And since I'm not knowledge or knowledgeable about it, I had to go on a website called Reddit and see what people say people in their 40s should wear. Where do men over 40 purchase their clothes and shoes? This person should have asked, where do men over 40 that are single and divorced purchase their clothes and shoes? But same thing, I guess. Brooks Brothers has 34 upvotes. I haven't heard that much about it, but I saw this department store called Von Ma sells it. Cue the makeover. Well, there actually isn't a makeover because we weren't that wild with Brooks Brothers. It just was a sweater. It was nice, but I was just thinking it was gonna be something specifically just for me because you said you had done all this research about what our demographic liked. But I would almost say this could just, anyone could wear this, not just a 48 year old or a 45 year old. That's what someone on the internet said. The internet's a crazy place. Since we only went shopping for probably five minutes, we had a bunch of time to kill. So we thought, let's go fishing and hiking. I'm always down for that. This right here is the perfect time to go fishing. It's getting dark out. This is when the little fish in that lake over there come out. I've always my whole life gone night fishing. A lot of people call me the night fisher. This is the spot. <laughs> sure, I won't get lost out here. I'm not scared though. Daniel, don't worry. I'm not. Oh, I wasn't worried at all. Oh, you thought I was worried? Oh. Do you even have a fisher's license though with you? Has this gosh dang country got so corrupt that you need a fishing license to go fishing at this little public park? Please say no, Daniel. Greg. I won't be able to say no because yes, it has. You need a fishing license. Also, we don't even have fishing poles. That's silly because I don't even use fishing poles when I go fishing. I just use my bare hands. I just put my hands in. Doofus over here didn't bring his fishing license, but at least we gotta go on a nice hike. And there's nothing 48 and 45 year olds like more than nature. They actually have studies that those are the two years where you enjoy nature the most. Yeah, that's what Samantha said. I mean, Jennifer, that's my ex-wife's name. I always forget her name. Sometimes at night like this, 
I feel like there's something bigger than us. Um, I don't really believe in any of that type of stuff. I just don't think there could be anything bigger than probably me. Instead of Tinder, I'm thinking of going to Match.com. I feel like there'd be a less influencer types. I don't really want my future wife after my ex to be an influencer type posting bikini photos online. That'd be just for me, you know? She wouldn't be able to post photos anywhere. So I feel like I'd be able to find that on Match.com. <laughs> you got me there. I, I want someone that's conservative. It just seems the older I get, I find more and more enjoyment in helping others, volunteering and stuff that I care about. One of the ways that I fill this need is by going to a grocery store and when you're at the checkout, donating some money. Because they always have that little pop-up prompt. Do you want to donate a dollar to the food society? I will always donate that dollar at the grocery store. You don't pick two dollars? I've started doing too, but it's it's not a competition. Do you do it at Panda Express even? I do it strictly at grocery stores. I haven't started oh. doing it at fast casual places. Panda Express, I think it's to the pet hospital of Tennessee or something. See, I don't care about animals. I only care okay. about humans. If it's a cause, I'll give my money to it. Okay, what if I made a cause Get me junk every day. Are you gonna donate a dollar to it to make me buy a bottle? That's what you're saying. Oh. You seem like you're just gonna give money to anything and any oh. anything everywhere. Don't be offensive. You're just being disrespectful. Anyways, it just absolutely brought a damper to my day because this grocery store didn't have that prompt. Do you, do you wanna donate a dollar? So unfortunately on this grocery store trip, I couldn't donate. Let me guess you're gonna always start going to that grocery store chain because they don't ask for the donation and you only donate at grocery stores. Oh wait, don't you have off tomorrow? You could go to a different grocery store. I don't know, just donate to a, a charity locally. I don't have time. You don't have work. I know, but I, I'm i just busy doing stuff tomorrow. Oh, don't try to explain it to me, I get it. You don't have to explain it to me. Throughout this day, me and my buddy Daniel, we've been collecting a few photos. For the dating apps and websites, we tried to keep it candid. A lot of people say it's not attractive if it's all posed. So we tried to just catch each other in genuinely real moments. Yes, we did take a few photos together because I've noticed that people are more likely to like you if you have a friend with you. So I wanted to show everyone on the dating sites, and I'm assuming you did too, D Daniel, that you you have a friend. You, you aren't just a loner. Even though these weren't really supposed to be posing, I do enjoy a good photo shoot. I know you've heard this story many times, but they haven't. When I was younger, I was at a mall in St. Louis on vacation with my family and a model scout approached me. My mom said I couldn't do it till I graduated college. And then I contacted the model scout. It was 15 years later. They said they only did kids. I missed my opportunity to be a child model. Why didn't you ever try to become an adult model? I didn't know any adult model agents, silly. I only knew the, did you hear the story? Did you hear the story? All right, we've arrived. I see your car's fixed over there. For this great day, I have a present for you. Wait, what, dude? Yeah, just just take it. Why is it in a lunch pail? It's the only wrapping I had at my house. Do I get to keep the lunch pail? No, I need it for work. Oh, that's fine. I wasn't saying, I don't need it. I already have my own. Oh, there's one light bulb of each. When we were driving around town today, I realized that your headlights were out. When you were, what were you doing? I think you took a bathroom break somewhere. I ran into Target and got some headlights for your vehicle. Oh, but you used half of them or what? Yeah, I don't know why they're like that. Oh, you can just tell me if you already, if these are from your house or something. I don't, no, I don't no, care I just, if like- if I they're... just wanted you to get new headlights because oh, I saw that they're out. Are these like four cars? I actually don't even need these. Cause I'm pretty sure my headlights are on. Just, oh, just, actually don't just need keep them. them, just keep them. You're, you'll, you'll need them in handy. All right. You're, they'll come in handy. Don't forget your lunch pail. Bye Daniel. See ya Greg.